And in terms of, we were talking earlier about the first home buyer grants and that sort of stuff, and, and we talked about now that area, area goes up to 900,000. Yeah. What suburbs do you think would be best for first home buyers, the 20 to 30 year olds around that 900 k yeah, mark? Great question. And how good it is that it is at 900,000 now, because I mean, at 800,000, there just wasn't a lot, wasn't yep. a lot there to buy. Well, it was seven, and then it's eight, and now it's nine. Yeah, so. it's just yeah, and it has to be right because that's just that's just how you know that urban sprawl like we talked about earlier. It's it's, it's just going to keep uh, making this area more and more in in demand. I, I just think yeah. Yeah, going to 900,000 now changes the game a little bit. You can get, I think at 800, you were pigeonholed to an old three bedroom, one bathroom, one garage. Places is at a maximum. Obviously, you've got terraces, townhouses, villas, duplexes, all that kind of units and all that uh, stuff coming in at the lower rate. But you, the best you could look for up to 800 would have been a, an old, maybe semi run down or partially renovated three bedroom, one bathroom, one garage place. And if it wasn't that, it would have been a, a nice home just. Uh, what, what would you say, the best house in the worst street, that, yep. that sort of style of, of buy, yep. um, which kind of goes against that old real estate adage of you want to you want to buy the worst house in the best street and do it up, I, I suppose. So, yep. you know, the, this this going up to 900 now can maybe get somebody a second bathroom. It can maybe get somebody a double garage. It can maybe get somebody a bit more backyard. Mm-hmm. Or it might just get them into some of the more affluent suburbs at the entry level and just make that first step. First step's the hardest step, but it just might make it that little bit more manageable for, for people. I think that's a great idea. And what is it again? You get you get 5% deposit yes. and you avoid uh, uh, LMI if, yeah. you, if you give 5%. So if you bought a house for 900000 and you had, say, a 5% deposit, normally and you had to pay LMI, you're yep. probably looking at anywhere from 20 to 30K insurance. Fair dingham. Yeah, right, okay. So yeah. now the government said, hey, we'll back you and we'll go guarantor for that other 15%. Yeah. So then you'd only need to come up with a 45 deposit instead 5%. of 70 for that. And stamp duty would be on 900, about 36,000, so And then you would need, yeah. So okay. That, so if you had essentially 80 to 90K, you could you get away comfortably it. to buy something for 900. That's cool. Yeah. Most most people think for something 900, you'd need 180 plus oh, stamp yeah. duty. Yeah, 100%. 200 plus. Yeah. So you can get in for 85 to 90 with these new schemes. But that's really encouraging for first home buyers in our area at the moment. That's cool. And that comes in effect in June, is that right? 1st of July. 1st of July. And the, yeah, okay, the new great. grants will come out for the yeah. 900,000. But also, you know, if people have family members that have equity or can give them a gift or something as well to help them out. There's so many other ways to get into the market these days. you just got to speak to your, your local expert. That's right. I don't think that knowledge the is there. The bank of mum and dad as well. The bank of mum and dad. <laughs> I don't think that yeah. knowledge is there for enough young people, you know. I mean, us agents, we're normally dealing with people – a couple of more, a couple of steps ahead on along the line that they'll come to us ready to buy, or they'll come to us pre-approved, or they've already spoken to a broker because it's that old one where you you, you fill up your grocery, you know, your trolley full of groceries, and then you get to the checkout and you're like. Where's my wallet? You know, have I got it? You, you normally have your wallet on you before you, you go to the shop. So a lot of these buyers are coming already with an idea of a pre-approval to us. But it, it I don't reckon there would be enough first-time buyers that know just how many things are available to them to get them into the market. And, um, yeah, it's it's funny, you know, like uh, – you, you, People always say, "Well, is now a good time? Is now a good time to get? Is now a good time to buy? Is now a good time to sell? Is now a good time to do anything?" And um, I think, in if you took any time, if you went back a decade at a time in any stage in our lives, properties are worth more now than they were the ten year prior. I don't think there's any other real examples where it's been the other way. So, you know, the answer is always buy when you can buy and buy now because time in a market is always better than timing a market. The longer you're in it, that you, the better your outcome. You're going to do it. So this puts people into it. Into it sooner yeah over time i think that's going to put them in uh, in good stead and put them in front and um, i like that um adage you yeah. use there because a lot of people get short-sighted and they try to time these markets and focus on interest rates and all these other things but as uh, you said time in a market definitely beats timing the market